On March 31st, 2001, Mary Shu, a dear sister in the Lord's recovery, went to be with the Lord. She was born in 1900 and lived 100 years, spanning the entire 20th century. She came into the recovery at the age of 32 and remained faithful throughout her life, serving first under Brother Watchman Nee and later co-working with Brother Witness Lee. During the last 25 years of her life, she served the church in Seattle and was faithful in preaching the gospel and shepherding the church and the saints. Her long life is not only a chronicle of the history of the 20th century, but a living testimony to the move of the Lord in His recovery. She ministered to thousands of saints and perfected many to the Lord's service. Do 是单纯的爱主1900 was the year of the Boxer Rebellion and the year the 20th century began. You all know Chan was a country of the old culture full of Confucius teaching and in another sense full of Buddhism Praise the Lord. Anyhow, the Lord sent his gospel there. For the church life, China by that time was a virgin soil. Of course, it was the Lord doing. You can never imagine in that heathen country, full of Confucius teaching and full of the Buddhism worship the law could or the law would raise up something Sister Mary Xu was born in the province of Anhui, China on October 23rd of 1900 as the oldest child of a China Inland Mission pastor. The second daughter of the family, Xu Feng Xian, eventually married Ni Hui Tzu, the second of Watchman Ni's younger brothers. Later, Mary's youngest sister, Grace, was married to Watchman Ni's youngest brother, Ni Xing Su. At the age of 14, her father died but her mother remained to serve in the China Inland Mission. Upon graduation from university in Nanking, she went on to study nursing in Shanghai, the largest city in China, and the third largest city in the world at that time. 
At the completion of nursing education, she worked in the renowned Shanghai Municipal Council Hospital, a British hospital that received only foreigners at that time. She was soon promoted to be the head nurse, and in 1930, at the young age of 30, was appointed the assistant director of the hospital. Shanghai, at the beginning of the 20th century, was a very cosmopolitan city. Along the Bunt, a business strip by the Yangtze River, were tall bank buildings. Mary's Hospital was in the heart of this district. Further inland, the English, French and Japanese concessions and other Chinese-controlled districts were teeming with activity. It was here that the Lord's recovery had a fresh beginning in 1927. In March 1927, I left Chaozhen in Wuxi for Shanghai. Upon arriving in Shanghai, I learned that many brothers and sisters were arriving one after another from different places. Prior to my arrival in Shanghai, there were bread-breaking meetings in Sister Peace Wang's house in a district called Xinjia Huayuan. After we all arrived, our meeting place moved to a lane called Gongqingli. At the same time, the Gospel Book Room moved to Shanghai from Fuchao. In January of 1928, we rented some premises at a lane called Wendeli off Hadun Road, Shanghai. And on February the 1st, we started the special conference. Hardoon Road was situated at the heart of the city in the English concession. It was near the Hardoon Park in a district developed by the Jewish businessman Silas Hardoon. During the 1930s, this was a thriving and pulsating neighborhood. The lane called Wen Da Li was a cluster of houses off the Hardoon Road. These houses are uniquely Shanghai in style. They were built along a network of lanes which opened to a single entrance onto the main street. Within that single entrance are hundreds of families, each unit facing others across the lanes. The testimony of the Lord's recovery thus began in one of these lanes. I was saved in 1932. I came in the church line. Yeah. By the way, yes, by the you know, first in the uh, Ruth Lee's Bible class. And then, that's right, I got saved spontaneously. I came into the church. And then, when I came that time, I think a lot of people. I attended, well, one, one conference. After that, uh, Witnessly, about 1933, Witnessly came. Of course, he knew each other by correspondence. When he came, he was already to be the co-workers in Shanghai. It's really from the Lord. When up the north, that witness lead. Went down to the south, that watch Wendy. So this is from the Lord. And then finally they came together. They, both of them, I just, I can testify because I'm the one that followed these two brothers all the way through. Brother watch Wendy and brother witness lead. I'm not glorified the person. I'm glorified Lord Jesus. How the Lord did the work for 55 years, like that. The church in Shanghai was still a young church, and there were many practical needs. Sister Mary became a strong supporter of the Lord's work during this period of time. In her own testimony, Mary told of how she dealt with the Lord in the matter of material offering. After I got saved, Ruth Lee, eh? She said, you confess your sins. 
Not to say, oh Lord, I'm a sinner, please forgive me. No, you have to count your sin as inventory. This helps us to hate sin for our future life. That's what he told me. So I nailed down, I locked my door. I said, Lord, any more, any more, any more. And then I can say, Lord, at present I think no more. But if there's some more, please let me know. The Lord did. At that time, Mary was working in one of the best hospitals in China. Our hospital, eh? My, I didn't know my hospital is the top, the number one. Fifty dollars, silver money, silver, you know? Pure silver. Have board, have food, have a nice, nice room. Have boys to serve us. You don't have to make your bed. You don't have to do everything. Do nothing. Starting from 1933, I tell you, even after that year, 1933, my, that was really hard. We, of course, learned the faithfulness of the Lord, no doubt about this, but in that kind of financial situation, we did learn what is poverty. Some of the times, while Brother Ni, in the early years living in Shanghai, he got nothing to eat for the whole day. Just a little bread. Not the bread you think about in your supermarket. No, just some kind of Chinese poor brain. He just picked up a little and uh, take that. And uh, I do believe this kind of thing happened quite a number of times. Even I myself with others suffered things like this. Really, some of the times we just come to a time we don't know what will be for our eating the next meal. And the Lord really did some miraculous things. Miraculous things. Really miraculous. It's wonderful. When I was working in the hospital, I said, Lord, I give this to you, Lord. I know. Just the minute you come in, you were washed away. The Lord said, Elijah, that famine, go to the uh, widow. The widow only a grasp of flour, a little oil. I said, Lord, you wait for me. I will obey, but uh, I will someday I will I pray, pray. And then the Lord made, you know, one woman with uh, alabaster, first time came, stand up, and then bow down, cried, and again bow down to wipe the feet. The Lord showed me this. Lord Jesus, I'm this one. I'm so proud to stand here. Lord Jesus, finally, and finally I give myself or pour myself to you. Lord, I want to be this kind of a woman. Every time if I empty myself, the God is so near. I can touch the God. I can touch the Lord. And you all the time really happy, just like sorry. And love Him. And love the Word. 